I'm I'm a member of a PCUSA church. We have uh, just a, a wonderful doctrinal, a, a wonderful statement uh, of what it is that we believe. And one of the state the statement on the atonement points out that there are many images of what Christ did on the cross. One of which is take our place. He's the Lamb of God, right? It goes back to the Old Testament image. So I have no, I have absolutely no objection to the idea of substitutionary atonement being one of the many images, biblical images, of what's going on there on the cross. It does get seriously corrupted when the lawyers, uh, what's called Protestant scholasticism, you know, that the, the generation after the, the, the reformers, Calvin, Luther, and those were, um, it gets turned into this legal theory um, where you're, you're talking about some sort of legal exchange. That's what I grew up with. And, and that kind of never made sense because, you know, sin is not like a coat, you know. I sin, you sin, we all sin. But I can't, you know, I've got a coat, you've got a coat, and we can exchange coats. But we can't exchange sins. That's sort of like exchanging pain. My pain is my pain. I can't, I can't give my pain to you except for in some sort of metaphorical sense. So, you know, that this whole penal substitution, that it's some sort of legal transaction, you know, never made sense to me. And now when I understand all the options, um, you know, there's always been three big theories of the, the atonement. Some sort of substitution, some sort of example, this demonstrates his love for us. But the one that, you know, I just started doing backflips over when I was, I don't know, 35, 40, I read Gustav's alone book, uh, Christus Victor. Christ the victor, Christ the conqueror of Satan, sin, and death, right? If the problem was solely that we broke the law, then okay, God just could have pardoned us. Ah, okay, here's a pardon, spelled out exactly what you have to do. But that's not the problem. The problem is we live in a toxic culture. We're, we're, we're bound by sin. I love amazing grace. I once was blind, but now I see. We're blinded by sin. Sin makes you stupid. The problem is sin is all around us. Sin is not an individual problem, not just an individual problem. We, we live, Paul talks about the powers and principalities, right? We're bound to the powers of principality. Think of Paul's wonderful chapter seven, the good that I will, I do not do in Romans. The evil that I don't wanna do, that is what I do. How does Paul conclude? He concludes with that incredible song, that, that incredible hymn where Christ conquers Satan's sin and death. That's my um, that's my go-to explanation. Now I'm not going to deny substitutionary elements. I am going to deny the penal stuff. That just doesn't work. So I'll, you know, yes, there's an example of, of you know, God shows His love for us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, wonderful example. Yes, in some sense, Jesus is the Lamb of God, invoking all that images of sacrificial lambs, sacrifice in the Old Testament. But let's not leave out the conquest of Satan's sin and death. Christ reigned victorious. One of you know, my favorite verse is, is uh, that one uh, in, in Colossians, right? He took the powers and principalities, nailed them to the cross, and made a mockery of them in his resurrection. Now that's a hope I can get my teeth in.